sucks. All right, so if I have a problem like 2 to the 7th and I'm wanting to divide it by 2 to the 4th, again, if I were to go ahead and write this all out longhand, that would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, so you should have 7 2's <coughs> for the numerator. And then for the denominator, I should have 4 2's. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now, when you are dividing, you are able to go ahead and cancel what you have that's a like on the top, that's also a like on the bottom. So since all of this is multiplication, you're able to do that. So those 2's are going to cancel each other out. And those twos are going to cancel each other out. So will those. So will those. And then all you're left with up here is 2 to what power? Third power. To the third power. And since there's nothing left on the bottom, it's not a 0, it's a 1. Because technically you could say I'm multiplying by a 1 at the end. So this is 2 to the third. 2 to the third over 1, which is just 2 to the third. We're not going to focus on simplifying it all the way yet. I just want you to get the understanding of what's happening. What did I do from here to get to here without having to write all this out? Justin? Subtracted. So all we had to do here was for dividing, if we're dividing powers that have identical bases, we're just going to subtract the exponents. So let's write that rule down. <clears throat> so for our rule, when dividing powers of identical bases, you subtract the exponents. When you're dividing powers that have identical bases, all you have to do is subtract the exponents. So for multiplying by identical bases, you added the exponents. When dividing by identical bases, you subtract the exponents. So if I've got negative 7 to the ninth power over negative 7 to the third power, what is that going to equal? Negative 7 to the sixth power. And what's really important is you have to put that final answer inside parentheses. Okay? So this would become negative 7 to the 9 minus 3. 3 power, which is negative 7 to the 6th power. And of course, because it is a number, we can go ahead and finish it all off, right? Just like Arham tried to do 2 to the 3rd, he's like, hey, he kept yelling out 8, 8, 8. It's the same thing here. What is negative 7 going to be to the 6th power? It would be a positive. That's true because it is a, pro, a, a, a an even exponent. So you would have an even number of uh, negatives you're multiplying by. But you're going to get 1,100, I mean, not, not sorry, 117,649. Now, you could also have just, huh? That's a, a comma. It's a comma. Now, the reason that the rule is so important is because are you always going to have just numbers? No. no. You're going to have variables that you're going to have to do this with as well. So if we have x to the 8th over x to the 3rd, what is that going to yield? x to the 5th. x to the 5th. You've got x, and the exponents are going to be subtracted. You're subtracting the 8 and the 3. So that gives you x to the fifth power. And you can't simplify that, so that's our final answer.
Now, of course, you're going to ha sometimes have a little bit more detail that's going to be occurring. So maybe you might have a problem like 72x to the fourth, y to the fifth over 3x y. Okay, in a situation like that, you would have to just focus piece by piece. So the first thing that we would focus on is that 72 over 3. What is 72 over 3 going to yield? Huh? 24. So we're going to get 24 for that answer. Then we're going to focus on the x to the fourth over x, which is technically x to what power? First. The first. What will that yield? X to the third power. And then we've got y to the fifth over y, which is technically y to the first. And that would yield y to the fourth. So then if we piece it all together, our final answer is 24 x to the third, y to the fourth. Go ahead and try this next one on your own. If we have 3 to the 4th and we're multiplying it by a to the 10th times d to the 5th over 3 to the 2nd power times a to the 8th d to the fourth. I want you guys to go ahead and simplify that as far as it can possibly go. All right, who can raise their hand and tell me what the final answer is going to be? Um, Josh? Very good. 9a squared d is the correct answer. We're first going to be focusing here on the 3 to the 4th times the 3, or I'm sorry, divided by 3 to the 2nd. So when we have 3 to the 4th power over 3 to the 2nd power, that's going to give us 3 to the 2nd power, which would wind up giving us a 9. Okay, then we've got the second portion, which is the A's. We have A to the 10th over A to the 8th. So A to the 10th over A to the 8th 
we're going to subtract those, and that's going to wind up giving us a to the second power. And then we've got d to the fifth over d to the fourth. d to the fifth over d to the fourth, and that's going to wind up giving us just d to the first or d. If you wanted to put a little exponent of a 1, you could, but it's not necessary. So then when we piece it all together so that we have our finalized answer, you've got 9a to the second d. Let's go ahead and I want to try one with you guys that has you doing, um, yeah, let's see about this one. All right, Jordan, what did you get for your final answer? 3 to the third, 27. Very good. 3 to the third, which also is the same thing as 27. So for here, you have two different rules that are occurring. You've got your multiplication rule with the identical basis. So it's called a product of powers. And then you've also got a quotient of powers, so the dividing of the powers. So it doesn't matter the order. That you're, that you're actually doing these in because it's all the same base. But for me, I like to go ahead and multiply them first and then divide them in a situation like this. So I would have gone ahead and done this portion first, which means I would have added those exponents together and gotten 3 to the 6th power over 3 to the 3rd. And then I would have focused on subtracting those exponents. So that would be 3 to the 6 minus 3 power, which gives you 3 to the 3rd power. Well, then you actually have to work that out. 3 to the 3rd power is just equal to 27. Okay. Aristea? Yeah, you could have done that. However, you need to understand the, how the rules work because I'm going to give you a situation like this. You aren't able to actually multiply anything and get numbers to divide. It's just variables. So you have to understand your rules. not a proportion, honey. Well, if only this video could um, capture my face when you ask questions like that. <laughs> yeah, but then I'd have to like duck underneath here and I don't quite want to do that. 
Nobody wants to see this face that close. Sure. Trust me. Yeah. All right, Colin, what'd you get? Mateo? A to the seventh power. A to the seventh power. So, for here, shh, in a problem like this, I would actually focus on doing each of the individual fractions first. So, this would become A to the 10 minus 6 power, which is A to the fourth. And then I would focus on the other one. The A to the seventh divided by A to the fourth becomes A to the 7 minus 4 power, which is A to the third. And since it's multiplication in between those, I would then multiply those two, which means I'd add those two powers, and that would give me A to the seventh power. Okay, you also could have gone, okay, I'm going to do A to the tenth times A to the seventh, which would give me A to the seventeenth. And then I could do A to the sixth times A to the fourth, which would give me A to the tenth. And then subtracted 17 minus 10 to get A to the seventh. Those are two different ways that you could have worked through the exact same problem. Any questions? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hand you guys. It's a worksheet that compiles both yesterday's material and today's material together. So you've got multiplication and division. So you've got product of powers and quotient of powers combined together. You need to complete that, and it's due tomorrow. But you've got, you've got 13 minutes in class.